you ever felt like this when you post something with no reactions? It's not the best, is it? For the best reactions, you need the best, most unique product or idea. And when it comes to cookies, Mo Sweets is the best there is. Whether you buy some for yourself or you gift them to others, you'll always get the perfect reaction. With these cookies, you get the love of a homemade item with the professional quality of a seasoned baker. They make the perfect post and the perfect treat. For more reactions, order more sweets. Order online at mosweetstx.com and find them on Facebook and Instagram. Salvador Dali once said, intelligence without ambition is a bird without wings. If that's true, hire ambitious management and make the smart choice to watch your dreams soar. If you're an up-and-coming business person and don't know where to start, if you need a tax professional, or if you just want a free evaluation of your current life policy, please reach out to Amber Avis and watch your dreams take flight. She's available on social media. Hello, everybody. And this is the Beat the Club podcast with Michelle Rubio Garcia. I am an educator, author, and podcaster out of Laredo, Texas. And I want to welcome you to the BTC community. Whether it's your first time or whether you're a returning guest, I appreciate all of you. And I hope that you get a, a lot of substance out of this podcast. So this podcast is all about beating the clock literally through 45 minutes and four questions, but also figuratively. So how can we make the most of our time and how can we make... Um, the best life that we possibly can with the finite time that we're allowed. So really quickly, before we jump into today's episode, I just want to say a big shout out to um, Laredo School of Contemporary Dance, to Mo Sweets, to Ambitious Management, and to 1802 Social House. Um, there are four ads that we have, and I'm so happy that they're on board with me. And I just want to say that if this is your third time watching this episode, or this series, I should say, um, I hope you can consider potentially becoming a patron. So if you go to the Patreon page for this podcast, you can support me on a monthly basis. The donations start as low as $5 a month, which is basically like going to the gas station or going to the fast food place and getting a soda or a drink. And um, you can get goodies, behind the scenes exclusives. You can get personal shout outs on this podcast. So in this intro, instead of me blabbing away, I could be saying, what's up, etc. What's up, girl? And so if you want that, you can just go ahead and log on to the Patreon page and see what level you prefer to donate at. I know it's COVID-19 and I know there's a lot going on. So for whatever you can do from the bottom of your heart, um, I would really appreciate it. Um, if you're going to contribute, I hope it's because you appreciate the BTC mission. So today I am privileged to have Amber Avis, a local entrepreneur who is actually the owner of two of the businesses that are in our ads. She's the owner of Ambitious Management and 1802 Social House. But let's learn a little bit more about her. Born, raised, and blossomed in Laredo, Texas, Amber Avis is a 29-year-old entrepreneur. Um, aside from owning Ambitious Management and 1802 Social House, she is also the president of Webb County Young Democrats, up and coming treasurer for the Webb County Democratic Party, the youngest chair of the Laredo Commission for Women, where she serves as vice chair, and also a board member for the Logistics and Manufacturing Association. Amber has also organized the first International Women's Day celebration, which has been recognized by two official proclamations from the city of Laredo and Webb County. Clearly, Amber is a go-getter. She has a hustle like no other. She's a childhood friend, and I can't wait for you to hear her story and learn how she beats the clock. clock. Is it going? And here we go. All righty, this is Beat the Clock. Welcome, Amber Avis. Hi. Hi. Um, we go way back, actually. So I've known Amber since roughly sixth grade, I believe, right? Yeah. A long, long time, and um, I, I, I don't know, like I keep gravitating back towards her, and I know that's not a coincidence, so I'm super happy that she's with us. I'm super happy that she's going to share all of her wisdom. She's so young. She's so powerful. Um, I, I love what she's about. So um, in the intro, I did say that she is, I mean, look at my notes real quick. She is a part of the... Webb County Young Democrat, so she's president. She is also a part um, owner of 1802 Social House here in Laredo. It's an Airbnb, correct? 
It's an Airbnb and like you rent it out for events. I also have like long term mm-hmm. events available. Cool. And so just like excuse, yeah. Awesome. And she also owns, owns, right? Ambitious management. So she is an accountant, life insurance um, person, like everything you need in terms of planning. Am- Amber's your girl. So um, yeah, thank you for being on this journey with me. Like I mentioned, um, I'm really inspired by you, Amber. So I'm talking to other people that I'm going to interview. And then um, one of them, Colin, he'll be on later. He inspired me to like add an additional title. He was like, surprise me. Uh, so he was like, put entrepreneur, but then put something else. Cause he's a COO. He's a, he's like an Instagram, like expert. And so I was like, do you want me to put all that? And he said, surprise me. So I put good human. Like it just came to me, right? Like to me, he's just such a good guy. So willing. And so with you, the phrase that came to me was brave strategist right? Like, that's how I think of you in your essence. Like you're someone who's so intentional. You're someone who, um, makes plans and like sees them through. That's, that's one of your biggest strengths, Amber. And, um, maybe you think it's normal, but, but it's not. (laughs) I'm I'm glad you're highlighting that because sometimes I don't recognize it or like, I don't own up to my own strength like that, but you're definitely right. Yeah. And like, that's why you're here in Laredo still, you know, I don't know that um, a lot of people would do what you're doing. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. That's why when I was thinking of people, I was like, Amber's going to be one of my girls, like she's going to come. So um, (laughs) yeah. So um, part of that, you know, is Part of what drives you is that you see things before they're real, right? I, I believe you were the one that was instrumental in starting the International Women's Day, right? In Laredo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- that is like something that I didn't even think was possible here. You know, um, people say, mijita, right? When you're 30, because they're talking down to you and they don't even know it, right? Um, and there's just this very old school culture here. So I think the fact that you could make something like that happen here was like incredible. Um, That's like the beginning of a movement. So with that being said, before you were Amber Avis, uh, entrepreneurial extraordinaire, who were you? So again, before all those labels, who was Amber Avis? Um, I, before, before everything kind of like blew up and became what it is, like, I was just like a girl with really no direction. Um, as you remember, like my mom passed away when I was 15. We were in high school, we were in class together. And mm-hmm. I didn't know that that would affect my, the rest of me for the rest of my life um, and my plans. And so losing my mom at that age, I realized when she didn't have life insurance, she didn't even have health insurance um, and she didn't have a will or a trust or a guide map for me to continue to live my life. And I learned, like, I went through, you know, I moved with my dad and I learned like economic status and, you know, white and black. And it was just so much different than being a little, little girl in, in Laredo, Texas. Um, I went right. to the University of Missouri, tried to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, losing my mom, what had happened was she didn't have health insurance. So when she went to the hospital, um, they refused her service and she ended up having an aneurysm. So I was angry. I wanted to like be in politics and do like healthcare reform and like work on those things. But then I realized that it was just so much bigger than that. It was like being able to afford health insurance, being able to have life insurance, have a plan. And that kind of like, once I was graduating, like I wanted to be all these things, but I didn't know really where to start. Um, and that kind of just played into who I was learning what I went through to get where I am now. Mm -hmm. So now um, I stepped away from being like, I was an employee for a family firm and like, I loved my job. I had, I was learning a lot. I was learning more like about taxes and life insurance and how we can strategize for the future and learning the importance of everything. But I was like, this is it. This is it. I I don't want to just end here and sit in this desk forever and work eight to five and, you know, try to make it be like limited, like right. I wanted so much more for myself. I did. I wanted to be my own brand. I wanted, I was bringing in my own clients anyways. I was like, I want more recognition than a pat on the back. Like, 
I'm building relationships. Like people trust me with the most important aspects of my life, of their life. And like, I should be paid for that. And I should be valued for that. And so when I decided to step away, like it was, it was scary. Um, it was hard. It wasn't easy. Like there's a lot of things that I didn't expect. There was days where, you know, my bank account was running so low and I was sweating. Um, um, but then there's just days that made up for that. Um, they built my strength. They built my character. Um, they helped me build like an really a amazing relationship with my boyfriend, now husband. And um, like it just, it made me stronger. Everything I went through made me stronger. Um, and that's who I was and how I got to where I am now. And now we're just hitting the ground ready. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I just find that so fascinating because, again, like I, I've known you for so many years, but I didn't know that your mom's passing was just so much of a factor. So um, that kind of prompted a question within me. And it's it's I guess um, I'm trying to phrase it correctly. But would you say that um, like you're coping with death made your living more valuable? Yeah. And I and I actually like I thought about this when I watched your your first episode. So like. For me to cope, like I had to keep myself busy. Like I've, and I've just, I just keep myself like so busy, like plate full. What can I do? Like just to keep my mind going because if not, I'm going to be sad and I'm, you know, I'm just going to kind of like mourn. But like for me, like that, that the way I got over that is I, you know, just became super busy and that's how I keep going, you know. Yeah, but I mean, even then, I think, like, if you can ha channel that energy within you, like, you need to fix something, right? Like, yeah. it's not just a matter of going through it and just, because like, some people, their their parents pass away, and I'm sure they use that as a crutch forever, but yeah. you actually found your purpose in that, yeah. and I just think that's really admirable. Um, yeah, I found I my told purpose, hold on, I found my purpose, and I found my passion, because I was like, I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through, and I want them to, like, know that, you know, there's a plan, and there's a strategy, and these are hard things to talk about, but they're necessary, um absolutely when she was 45 years old like I'm we're about to turn I'm about to turn 30 we're the same month September so it's yeah. like you know we do have to start getting things in order our business our life our goals because tomorrow's never promised right we're two weeks apart I never I forget <laughs> uh, yeah and um something else that like really stuck with me about what you said was that um you feel like there's more right like we we get taught this narrative that you know, just find something stable, just find something that is going to keep you like on autopilot. Right. And then even me, like I got into teaching for the stability and I had tons of fun. I made tons of memories. I feel like I impacted tons of lives, but even then I was still like, there's more, like, is this really the end? Like, yeah, there has to be more. This is not it for me. And so yeah. I think that, um, anybody who's like blazing a trail like you or like me, um, we have that kind of innate drive and it's kind yeah. of inexplicable and it's like a fire like you don't want to stop you like want to keep going to the next thing like one of the things that I did is I got a second degree in accounting um, and then I got my life insurance license Maybe I got my license first and that's something I don't even highlight right because it's just like a small portion of my business um, but then I'm like I want more so then I went after like okay I'm gonna get my CFP certification so I just finished all my classes for the CFP Laredo does not have one female CFP. They only have two men, two men in the whole city. So I was like, I'm going to be the first. So um, thanks to COVID, I'm taking my test in November, but I'm not done there. Like now I'm adding, right now I just signed up um, for my, I'm going to take the property and casualty insurance. So I want to add that too to my business. And then next I'm going to add health insurance, like just adding all those components and not stopping. Like, how can my business grow? How can I grow? How can I provide more services to my clients so that they don't have to go somewhere else? Right. And and that's what I think it is. It's having, again, what I mentioned, um, is having that foresight. Like, people think once they get to a certain spot, like, they, they stop dreaming. They stop looking at options. And you always have to look at options because you never know what you're going to tap into. Like, people told me that uh, getting a master's degree, and it was accelerated, Right. <clears throat> they told me why are you doing that dude you already have like a, a stable career like relax and I was like are you kidding me like this is this is not gonna be where this story um yeah. ends so I'm sure. I don't know 
Um, I, the second question I, I have to ask is, um, like you heard, who are you? So yes, like you said, you're somebody who, um, sorry, I'm looking for the charger because I don't want this thing to die. But you're somebody who looks for that sort of, I might have to go get it over here. Actually. Um, but that's okay. So that sort of drive and that sort of um, service oriented kind of thinking. So what have you learned along the way that informs your decision making now? Uh, well, first of all, I'm ambitious. Like I took that from my Tinder profile a long time ago and it's just been, like <laughs> stuck with me. Cause like, yeah. every day I wake up and I have to be ambitious. Like I have certain goals to reach. Um, I have certain deadlines to hit, like, and I want to go and be up above and beyond. Um, but you know, who, who am I like now and where do I want to be? Um, and how are we going to get there? Like I'm super goal oriented. Um, I'm super passionate about what I do. Um, I also have like my days where I just like need a break. Um, yes. and I'm human. Um, I'm right. compassionate, like. I'm always going to go above and beyond to like help somebody else, like before I even help myself. And um, that's something that I think people don't um, understand too. Like you can be ambitious, but still rest. Like people think it's like this nonstop grind and that you're never going to ever rest, but you can rest. You just don't quit. Right. You keep going mm -hmm. up and up and up. And so um, is there anything else you want to add to that question? Cause I have like a bunch of like sub questions, but. Say that question one more time so I can make sure I answer all of it. Just do you have anything else to add to that part of the question? Um, because I mean, I, I got some some questions to throw at you, so. Okay. Um, I think that's I'm good on that question. Okay, so um, let me just really quickly. I'm sorry, I've been moving. I'm just like, is it charging now? We're good. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think that, like you're saying, a lot of your goals come from asking questions, right? So a lot of people either don't ask any questions at all, right? Or they're asking the wrong questions. They're asking, they're pointing at somebody else and what they're doing and they're criticizing it, right? I, why is the mayor doing that? Oh, why is the president doing that? And that's like part of it. But the larger question that I think we all need to ask ourselves is um, what can I do to fix this problem, right? Nobody takes that power and owns it, right? Everybody hands it off to everybody else. What's this person gonna do about it? What is that group gonna do about it? But a lot of the power is really in us. And I feel like that's the point of a podcast. So can you say that? Like, how does asking questions actually give you more power in your life? I think by asking questions, just one, it gives you like, you're not, you, you, have, you can't be afraid to ask. Like, you just need to like, get it out there. Like, hey, I need to know this. Um, you need to be able to like, comprehend and learn you know what you're asking and what you what you want to get accomplished so like I want to know more about like you know the stimulus check I have one I have to ask myself and then I have to go research and find out that question um mm -hmm. and I think yeah like you just have to be ready to absorb like whatever you're gonna ask and 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 know that there's not gonna be just like one answer too. There's going to be multiple answers and you're going to have to like really like dive in. Like you can't just be like you can't just read something you saw on Facebook and like believe that it's true because most of the time it's not like you actually have to like find good articles, peer review to like really understand why, read books. Like some people just think it's whatever's behind that screen and it's definitely Right. And that's something that I stress to my students all the time. Like, and I knew that in theory, but I, I did. It was really hard to execute. Like when they would ask me questions, I would feel like I would lose respect if I said I didn't know. But there's actually a lot of power in saying I don't know, because if if a student asks me something about history um, and I don't know it, I say I'm not versed enough to know that. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I can't give you that answer if I'm ignorant, like it would be stupid of me. Right. And a lot of the students that I have have said, you know, thank you so much for doing that. Or if they had a question, sometimes we would immediately just stop the lesson and we would get on the internet and we would search it. And yeah. they were acting like this was some extraordinary teaching that I was doing, but <laughs> it's just regular stuff. It's regular yeah. stuff that nobody does. People don't pause to think, hey, I don't know about that. Let's look it up. And by modeling that kind of critical thinking, I think it's really going to change kids, hopefully. Um, like you're saying, 
verifying your sources, knowing that there's more behind the screen than what, I mean, we're being fed, you know? So mm -hmm. if, if we just take what we're being fed, we're like animals, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're just like gluttonous in information, but yeah. part of, um, like when you work out, right? You don't just get whatever program you try to find one that works best for you. And slowly mm -hmm. you get conditioned. So like, if, if we take that discipline and filter our information, then we'll be so much more informed and we can make wiser choices and we can know that policies are disadvantageous to us and um, that we need to correct them. I mean. Definitely, definitely. I agree with you. Uh, let's see. There's another one. So where'd it go? Oh, okay. So what do you think about people who speak from that kind of ignorance? You know, because a lot of people are mouthing off on social media. And like you're saying, all they do is spread a headline. They don't even like read yeah. the article. Right. So um, they're ranting a little bit. And so when there's a bunch of ranting overall, th there's like no curiosity whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Um, some people that are online are asking questions. They're playing devil devil's advocate. And I think that's more constructive. So what would you say to that? Um, ranting online about information you're fed versus being curious and kind of challenging the information we're being fed. Yeah, so uh, I really can't stand those people on social media. And one, I try to report them or two, like I try to post a link or like a video that's kind of going to give like substance, like, hey, you're seeing this the wrong way. Like you need to understand why it's this or why it's that, like. I get a little too passionate on social media sometimes. I want to put my own opinion. Um, and that's when I'm like, oh, yeah, I have a degree in political science. Like, <laughs> my backup comes, right? This is what I work Great. for. But at the end of the day, like, it, there's no, like, political correctness. Like, people are still going to be, like, divided on their issues. Um, they're going to put what they feel before they put what it actually is or, or own up to what the actual information is. And we see that a lot. And so I just try to post like more like informational stuff um, before I get too passionate about other things. Yeah. And something that you're mentioning is um, how there's like kind of two truths, right? There's the truths that we're creating with our feelings mm -hmm. and that kind of like throws everything in another direction. And then there's like the objective truth. Yeah. So um, how do you think we uncover the objective truth? Um, it's, it's kind of hard because you have to like, one, you have to dig and find it. And then two, like somebody can still not accept it. Like, but you know, you just have to put the information that, you know, with a valuable source and, you know, just pr like really present your, your objective and your, your reason why, and, you know, kind of just follow through with the understanding behind it. And would you say that it's up to like, um, a select few to do that kind of thing or would you say it, it has to be a collective kind of rebellion I think it's like up to all of us just to like really like really like find the truth um mm -hmm. the truth and present it like um if you see like an article and it doesn't look legit like I hope sometimes I just like double click to see what are they actually saying in there um and like just you kind of just have to unveil the truth and and then you can either argue or agree or whatever you're going to stand behind. Um, but definitely, like, some people, like, I, let's hire, like, report people because I'm like, oh, this, is, this isn't legit. Like, why are you sharing this? Yeah. And I mean, like, um, I know, like, now we're coming into a wave of thinking where college is not necessarily a requirement. And I even said that, too, in my podcast, right? I do think that is an acceptable train of thought. And when I got into teaching, I didn't think that. So I have to be open to that reality, right? That college is not yeah. meant for everybody. And I don't even think that, like, it doesn't even have to be about college. Like, if you if you want to go study, go study. But if you're not, like, it doesn't mean you just have to be dumb. Like, you can, you can be a millionaire because you, you know, you learned about investing or something and you went another way. And just because you learned it, you went and studied or you mentored somebody who learned. Um, you can't just, like, say, I'm not going to go to college and be ignorant like either <laughs> like, yeah, like totally. educate yourself you know how to pay your bills how to do things on time like you still have to be an adult at the end of the day you can't just you know avoid it yeah that's something that um really drives me the idea of time right like 
Um, and I talk about it in one of the chapters of my book. And you just said it right there. Pay your bills on time. Like being on time is so underrated. It's so underrated. Yeah. And it, when we don't do, do things on time, we prolong progress. We uh, rack up debt. Um, we don't fix relationships. Like time is so important and everybody throws it away. So it's why I've made it such a central part of this project and this vision because we're, we're wasting our most valuable resource, right? Yeah. And we're like, we're being lazy and complacent if we're not on time, you know, like it, it, it speaks volumes when you're like at a meeting on time here in Laredo, everyone's five, 15 minutes late and like, it's acceptable. But when you're right. here the time, they're like not ready for you. And it's like, oh, we have an appointment at this time. My time is valuable. Like I have another meeting right after this. Like I need you to show up too. Like, if I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there at the time that's scheduled. Um, and yeah, paying your bills on time, that'll affect you. Um, missing things or just like being lazy and compl like complacent and forgetting that you have an appointment or a Zoom meeting and just kind of blowing it off is super annoying. <laughs> so I'm, I get so agitated with time because I'm like, I have so many things to do in a day and like it makes me angry when people aren't like, like with it, like right yes and like even my girls like if they would walk in like let's say we start practice at 8 15 if they would be walking in at 8 15 they probably thought i was like a lunatic overreacting but i'm like guys 8 15 is the starting point you're not walking in here you're not getting in the rhythm you should be here 10 to 15 minutes early and then we're starting like the energy in the room shifts when you're late um people don't take things as seriously um the the urgency the value is it, it's it's gone so um, I, I just think that's really good that you're tapping into that. And then the other thing is like, when you are late, you have to apologize. Like, right. You, like that's hot. Like, sorry, I'm late because of this. Like, no, you should just be on time period. And then you don't have to apologize. Or like, um, if you don't apologize, you're either one of two people, like you don't care and you checked out, which is mm -hmm. terrible. Right. Yeah. Or you don't say anything, but you're still in that shame right? Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, okay, we can. Yeah, like, I, uh, I feel bad if I, like, can't meet a deadline, or I'm running behind schedule, because people are depending on me to get this out at a certain time, like, like, there's no time for me to break, like, if that means, like, I told you earlier, like, right now I'm working on a project, so if I have to get up at 5 30 in the morning to start it at 5 40 or 6 o'clock, like, I have to get up and do it, because it's not going to get done at any other time, or if I have to work until midnight, sometimes one or two, like it just has to get done. Right. Like with the book, I'm staying up till crazy hours or even last night I was writing till three and there was a part of me, a lazy part of me. I was like, let me just reschedule with Amber. And especially because we know each other, I was like, uh -huh. let me just do that. But then I was like, what kind of bullshit is that? You know, like I cannot let myself be that weak. Like I'm not going to insult her time. I'm not going to make her move her schedule around my entitlement to to rest like if I stayed up it's my bad I have to deal with it I'm not gonna let you down and we're not gonna avoid having this conversation thanks for keeping your appointment I was I watched a video um last week uh, Senator Judith Safarini like talked about leadership and being a female entrepreneur and she talked about how she gets three to five hours like five is a lot, like she could sleep on three hours because she has bills to write. And if you didn't know, like last um, last Senate session, she wrote the most bills out of anybody. Um, she set like a record. And I'm like, I need to wake up with that kind of mentality. Like we got a lot of things to accomplish. Like why why worry about sleep? Like, Right, we, we got we got to be the clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna sleep when we're dead eternally. <laughs> yeah. Um, and something else I was gonna say. So like, okay, if you do go to college, right? Some people look at college as like a very um, linear path, right? Like you get a degree and it translates directly into a job, and that's not always the case. And I think even for people going to college, we have to shift that narrative because it's not always about. Um, just getting a job, you know, we, we, we limit ourselves when we're just thinking, I'm going to get X and Y job. Um, and I was listening to this free webinar for dance educators, totally unrelated, but she was saying, um, someone asked the question about whether or not it's worth it to get a dance degree anymore, because with viral dancers, with viral videos, you can get all the success, right? And she said, you know, there's a lot of value in an MFA, like, 
you build a network of people in that in that zone and, and even as a professional dancer you have like a super like extreme schedule and you naturally are not going to actually execute that schedule unless school makes you so mm-hmm. getting into the discipline of going to all these classes getting into the discipline of talking to people and collaborating like College is about that. It's like interacting with everything, every subject, every person, every professor, and just um, absorbing what you want and kind of knowing yourself based off of what you don't like. Can you um, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so like I didn't have the best grades. I'll be honest about that. My, my college experience was about the experience. Um, <laughs> I like lived in the all-girl dorm um, freshman year and joined the sorority immediately. And then like had to live in the sorority house. But there I got like leadership experience. I learned about networking. I learned about like having to meet strangers in a certain amount of time and getting to know them and then being able to like present who they are so that you can either like offer them a membership or not. And then even like when I was in the business school, like we had to go to like networking events where we would know how to to talk to people outside of work, you know, and make relations. And so I think it's about experience and then you also have those days where it's like okay I have an exam but I also want to go out and you have to like find the balance um so if you can handle it you know ha- handle the schedule the pressure um and just like the experience even having to have a job while you're in college like just maintaining a balance like I learned so much that's like not on my degree um just from one being out of state I was the first in my family to like go to college and graduate. Like nobody helped me with financial aid. Nobody yes. like my dad, my family was like, how are you going to pay for this? Like I got scholarship grants and I had to figure out, you know, how I was going to pay for my housing, how I was going to pay for food, you know, what I would like, am I going to go to college? Nobody was there to hold my hand to do that. And I learned how to grow up because of that. Yeah, I love that. I'm all about it. And even now, like I'm getting a PhD. Some people are like, why are you doing that? You have so much going on. And me personally, like I knew that I stood out in Laredo, right? Because I mean, a lot of Laredoans are silent and that's not, that's not all on them. Like the system has made them silent, right? But I knew I stood out, but there was still that question going back to being curious, right? Will I thrive in another institution? If I go out of state, am I still considered intelligent? Um, I wanted to explore that because I think that's when you get closer to the truth, you know, like if I feel smart, let me test my intelligence. You don't, you don't become something unless you're competing against it. Yeah, definitely. And I think like in, like in Laredo, like a lot of people have this mentality. One, like they've had this machismo culture for so long that like, if you try, I, I hang out with these like older ladies and like they said when they were in school, you could either be a nurse or a teacher, like those were your only options. And now like we're doing more things, right? But at to what level? Like there's not that many people, I say this a lot, like there's not that many people that are our age that are like leveling up yet because they're just like content with being there. But then there are this like group of us that, you know, if you want to be a, a superstar and you want to shine, like you can because we have this small town, I call it a small town, like we know yeah. everybody like you can promote your business and people are going to support you um you can go on to be like a professor or you know and do whatever you feel you can stand out like if you're willing to do the work but a lot of people aren't willing to do the work so I mean I'm okay with that too but I mean I'm gonna do the work <laughs> right and I mean I think there is like a something to be said about the ratio like we can't all be leaders too all the time because then there's going to be friction like there is a balance of like people following because then other people buy into a certain leader that they follow. But Mm -hmm. um, overall, I think no matter what role you're in, whether you're a follower, you're a leader, you can still model leadership. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I uh, I hope to be a good leader and I want to do of leaders. Like I have my little mini me's that are in college that, you know, reach out to me for for support and I'm like I'm so happy to see them doing things in their element and we're just going to keep growing that yeah I, and I swear like like you're saying Laredo is like um drowning in machismo but um with you hopefully with this I mean we're starting to see a little bit of breakthrough and it's mm-hmm. all about like pushing it pushing it and pushing it like let's pushing not stop yeah and so with that I mean that that bleeds in nicely into the final 
I guess, question, right? Which is, um, who will you be, right? So we're talking about Laredo and how we can change Laredo, but do, do you see yourself leaving the city? Do you see yourself staying here and making more change? Like, wh what's the future Amber going to look like? <laughs> Well, I have a lot of work to do. Um, one of my goals right now is I'm like, I'm trying to build wealth. Um, my family, like they, <clears throat> they worked hard, but they didn't really like save anything for us, uh, or, like for, for, for me. And so now I'm trying to build my portfolio for me and my family. Like I want to like, not necessarily be a, a millionaire, but I want to have like assets and I want to have businesses that generate profit so that I can retire young one day. I can step away and be a mom. Like I'm about to turn 30. Like I want to get pregnant. Well, my boyfriend mm -hmm. does not want to. Like I'm like, hey, times, times are coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the other thing is I do want to run for office. Like um, if I, I'm hoping to make it on the ballot this election and if not I'll just like wait until the next one but I'm trying to like figure out um where what what's next um because I have a lot of like career stuff going on um I'm trying to elevate my business I'm growing my clientele um but at the end of the day like I want to be somebody that makes decisions um and I, I want to be a mom too but I also want to build like a legacy so that's that's where I want to go next Awesome. Yeah. And so do you think that legacy is in Laredo? Yeah, I think, I think for now Laredo, like, I really didn't see myself here, but the fact that we have so many friends and family and like now a lot of people are reaching out, like people that we went to school with are, you know, wanting help with their business or they're getting started. Like I'm a good um, contact for them. They see me on social media, they see me at events, they see me in the paper. So like I'm, I'm building that business up, but I also have clients other places. Um, so I have a lot of clients in the Valley, San Antonio, I have clients in California, Missouri, like, and so I don't have to be in one place. Um, so I am planning to buy like another property here. Um, but I'm also looking to buy another property somewhere else. Um, so oh. that's way, and if I want to like run my business over there, I can, but if I'm elected into office, then either I'll stay here or maybe that job will take me somewhere else. Yeah, speak it into existence, girl. Yeah, you got to. And um, I mean, like, you're, you're going to do so much. And the internet is honestly like the biggest equalizer. Nobody has to stay still anymore. You can do this kind of thing. And it's to totally possible for you to have clients in just several states, to talk to mm -hmm. people in another country. Like, we don't have to think so small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was one of the reasons why I left, like, my family firm is because, like, I, they, I think they just, like, wanted me to stay there forever, like, in an office, and I was, like, that's not for me, like, as much as I love what I do, I love my clients, like, I want more than that, like, I want to grow, I want to be able to, tr like, travel for work and have business everywhere, um, I just don't want to be, like, stuck here, I want, I want more. Yeah, and okay, so, I mean, we talk about this hunger. We th talk about this journey, this pushing. How long did it take for you to be in a comfortable spot now? Like, I think people need to hear a very honest picture and like an actual timeline of when was it profitable? When did you feel secure? Like all that stuff. <laughs> I think it took me like, like the, I'll be super honest. So I started, um, I went full-time with Ambitious in March of last year. And then we started 1802 three months later. So it was, tough like the mm -hmm. first year was so hard um and then in like even in January we're like we just need to get through this tough month and we're going to be fine and like now is when I'm seeing like whoa like I wasn't expecting it to be this good and honestly like the pandemic kind of has like um a pull on it like people needed two years of tax returns, they needed help with stimulus, like they needed me more. So like the past few months have been really, really well for my business. Well, both of them really. Um, and so that's helped like, uh, and then them, uh, like the SBA and the government, like giving all these like incentives has mm -hmm. helped us even more. Like when we weren't planning to ask for help, like it was just like the blessing in disguise. Um, we got some small SBA loans and it's like, okay, well now, we can do so much more like we weren't mm -hmm. anticipating it and um I think like 
the year and like now looking back because like last year I went to hustle and socialize in June this time last year last um summer and like I was listening to other people say like your first year of business like you're going to be negative and you're going to think it's like really really hard but like just get through that and like now I'm at that year since that then and then now it's like wow I'm doing so good like they were right like I'm not going to give up like this is just mm-hmm. insane. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think people, it, it takes a day. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people, um, even if it takes longer, people don't want to feel that discomfort. And yeah. I think that when you're on the other side of it, there's so much there, you know? Yeah. Once you, once you get past the red, like there's just so much, there's so much opportunity. And like, I think um, like at the end of the day, it's about happiness. Um, like I'm just happier having my own schedule, making my own type of money. Like I'm not limited to like an hourly or like a set salary. Like it depends, like what I make is on how hard I work and how quick I can get things out and how quick my clients can, you know, be happy and them, you know, make their payments. Um, And so like at the end of the day, like I like to be able to spend, usually at this time I go do my grocery shopping. So like having that flexibility to like, you know, just take care of personal things at any time and take care of work things at any time. Like, it's just it's nice. <laughs> yeah. And w- uh, what I keep hearing from all those responses are like, you got your power back, right? You're not tied down mm-hmm. to anybody else's time. Yeah. And that you have true freedom to do what you want. Definitely. Like, freedom over anything. <laughs> yeah. So let's wrap it up. Um, what would you like to tell people to avoid clocking out? One final piece of advice. And again, just don't go on autopilot. Um, do this instead. What, what would you tell them? I just be like, focus on your goals. Like, remember at the end of the day, like what, why you started, um, who you want to be and you know, what you need to do to achieve that. Like, I'm very, like, I have to have my, my schedule, my list of things I need to accomplish for the day, for the month, for the year. Like, and I really have to, like, focus on those things. So just, like, focus on your goals. Like, don't let things stop you. Sometimes I have to, like, like not hang out with my family or, like, um, not go shopping or not get to go do something fun because, like, the goals are more important to that. You know, like, at the end of the day, I need to accomplish this or I need to get through this. And so... Just like really focus on the goal. And once you get to the goal, you'll get to, to enjoy everything else. Um, so you talked about how you write lists down. Do you prefer writing them down over putting them like um, on a phone or something? Yeah, like I just ignore things on my phone. Like I have like a, like a reminder to like do crunches. Never do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> set up and so I would never do it. But my list, like I literally have like my to-do list for the day and it literally says get shit done. And it's like... Mm-hmm get it done yeah. Yeah. No, you know I have my Sunday fun day my Monday fun day like Sunday is a big work day for me because I like to get ahead on the week um and then like I have uh like a, I used to do like bi-weekly budgets and like financial goals and now I, I try to do it at least a month and it's like you know I look at it like where am I at um I'm constantly looking at my numbers I'm constantly looking at like my work list like what clients do I need to finish like you know, what do I need to get done in that amount of time? So that's how I need the clock. Yeah. And I, and I, I bring that up because I know that too. If I write something down, it's so much more powerful than some little notification because even with social media and with people that we're supposed to like, you know, love and treasure, we blow mm-hmm. them up. We blow them up yeah. and the notifications are like, whatever, I'll message them later. So there's a lot of power in putting your goals to paper. And I'm really glad that you brought that up. And again, all I keep hearing from you is strategy, 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 yeah. like it's strategize your life, actually put it down on paper, um, reflect about it. Don't just mm-hmm. assume it's all going to work out. Be adaptive. I mean, um, and, and stay focused, you know, like be, be focused on the goal, but not so inflexible, I guess, about the execution, right? You need mm-hmm. to know your data can inform you. Yeah, definitely. And like, I like when I do my list, I also like going back and like, seeing what I did and just like reflecting on it um and that like helps remind me and like refresh my memory like why I did something why did I write this down or why was it important to me um and so definitely writing things down and executing them is is big and I mean um like 
I guess some people can interpret you being such a go-getter because I, I know that feeling um, as like forgetting everything else. And like you just said, you don't forget the past. The past actually informs you and it humbles you and it reminds you of the transformation. But that doesn't mean you stay stuck in the past. I feel like the, the past should be like something that you reflect on and it powers you forward. Like you've learned, you've made your mistakes, you know what you need to fix moving forward and you just like amplify from there. Awesome. So yeah, we're pretty much it. Um, at the end here, we're landing this plane. Um, do you want to pitch anything? Um, obviously, 1802 Social House. Again, you're speaking your campaign into existence right now. So congratulations. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you guys um, a little bit like what I do for both companies um, and kind of what my plans are for the future um, a little bit more. So um, ambitious management, like not only do I do accounting, I do um, bookkeeping, payroll, tax returns, but I can also help people file their LLC. So if you want to go from DBA to an LLC, like I can take that, take care of that for you. If you need insurance, um, life insurance, or like you want to invest that you don't know how, um, I can give you some strategy on that. If you just like don't know even where to start and you just kind of want to sit and do some like goal planning and setting like you know, figure out what it is, what's going to make money or like I'm a, a good tool for that. Um, and my prices are super affordable. I try to, I'm try to like meet everyone's budget. Um, and it's been pretty good. So I'll be adding, um, hopefully like general liability homeowners insurance soon, and then health insurance <coughs> by the end of the year. Um, and then 1802 social house is a 115 year old house in downtown Laredo. So when we bought it, um, my boyfriend did not want to live together. He did not want to buy real estate together. And then we came across this property and it's like way too big for us, but it had um, rental, um, like rental. Potential. Yeah. Um, so we rent out rooms on Airbnb and then I have two studio spaces. So one I rent out to Allure Boudoir Photography. So she's in here. She's also a millennial, super cool, boss babe. She's awesome. Um, and then I run my business out of here, but I have like more space. Like if you want like home office and you want like space to create, I have that too. And then I have an apartment in the back. Um, and so people have been either renting out rooms, studios, or like they'll rent out the whole house, like for an event or a party. And that's been really, really good. And so next is, um, we're hoping to buy some multifamily, um, units, some apartments soon. And I'm looking for like another short-term rental, hopefully by water somewhere. So that's like the next thing for us. So I continue wanting to grow, like do more real estate and get more involved and just make more money. <laughs> um, so 1802 Social House has a Facebook page. I know that. Does Ambitious Management? Yeah, well, it, Ambitious is like tied with my name. So you can find me at Amber underscore Avis at, on Instagram. And so um, just, again, speaking it into existence with specificity, what position do you want to run for? Ah, I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, I, I was really wanting to run for city council, but my husband now works for the city, so he killed my plan. Um, <laughs> but I'm looking at, like, probably uh, starting at either LISD or LC board right now. Um, and I really like LC. Well, they're both really close to where I live, like, uh, mm -hmm. border was like a block away and then LC is a few blocks so I think I might start there and then work my way up awesome well I'm so proud of you again Amber um I, I, I know I know your past self I I know that so <laughs> to see you like blossom and to see you I always knew you were a smart girl just because we're having an experience doesn't mean we forget our skills <laughs> and, um like I'm just so happy to see your growth and I can't wait to see what's next so again mm -hmm. this is beat the clock episode two with Amber congratulations thank you for having me and yeah, we're, we're clocking out, but make sure you don't. Thank you. Are you visiting Laredo, Texas in the near future? 
Just because you visit this beautiful border city doesn't mean you have to limit yourself to a few corporate hotels. Book 1802 Social House to unlock the possibilities. You can cozy up in a suite for a unique downtown experience. You can rent office space to create your own history while working in a historic home. Or you could rent out the space for your passion projects. The possibilities are endless. Book your stay now through Airbnb or find them on Facebook. Confidence, style, and artistry. Unrivaled dance education yields exceptional dance results. And this is the LSCD experience. The Laredo School of Contemporary Dance has established a nearly decade-long tradition of excellence, setting itself apart from local and national dance studios by offering a unique, unrivaled curriculum of diverse dance styles. And now the question is, are you ready to experience it? Find them on Facebook and register for summer courses now.